nowhere to go. And you see the panic set in, right? It's like a deer in the headlights. See the panic set in. And then he goes right to the handshake. But there's no one there. And I got fact checked by this a little while ago on Facebook. They go, no, no, no. He was pointing to the crowd with an open hand. I go, the only problem, I screenshot it, because I got the fact check, I screenshot the picture. The crowd is there, folks. It doesn't matter, but that shows you sort of what we're up against, right? Uh, I, I talk about, you know, the difference in the treatment. Uh, you have evidence of corruption that makes, let's call it Watergate, look like kindergarten. And it doesn't it's matter, right? What Watergate is. Uh, I always do the... Imagine it was the Don Jr. laptop from hell. <laughs> no, 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 I have a feeling it would be a slightly different response. Right? And, and I, you know, I've had some fun with it. I take it a little bit personally, because I too would have been nice, right? I mean, in my next life, I want to be a Democrat, because I could go sell out our country for a billion dollars in China and live happily ever after. It seems like... You know, because I understand Hunter is a very accomplished businessman, we've seen that from the videos. <laughs> right, you know, listen, China is many things. They're not stupid, but they're not also like us, right? There's no, like, diversity, equity, and inclusion component of, like, Chinese government investing. They don't, they weren't sitting there in a room and be like, you know what we're missing? We're grossly underrepresented with crackheads. We need, we need more crackheads managing Chinese government portfolios. We got just the guy, Hunter. We would probably do that in the United States right now, right? That's probably, that's how freaking ridiculous, we're not serious anymore, right? We are that stupid. China doesn't do that, unless of course they're buying you, which they obviously were. Right? We're, as we are on the brink of World War III, no one's asking. Do you think the Biden administration is making decisions, possibly because someone has more information? Yes. Of course, it's the most plausible, and it's literally the only, it was like Wuhan left, right? Do you think maybe, I don't know, do you think maybe the virus came from the lab that studies the exact virus in question. Like, in the town where the virus originated, that we've been virus funding in a function, function research in for, do you think maybe, just maybe it came from, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it came from four feet outside of that lab. <laughs> it was, of course it came from the lab. Like, what are you talking about? You don't have to be a scientist to believe that you have to have an IQ above zero. But it didn't matter if you were in academia, if you were a doctor, if you were a virologist, and you said, I don't know, maybe, maybe it came from the lab. You're out. Your funding's cut off. Because you know, science isn't science anymore, right? You know, in the last couple of years, I've, I've learned there are 4,976 genders. <laughs> I, I apologize. 4,999. There's been two more created since I got on this stage. We're not serious people. The adults were supposed to be back in charge. Right? The adults are back in charge. We were told this, right? Uh, and yet I hear them speak and I don't feel like they're adults or they're in charge. I mean, Joe Biden is not even in charge of his own faculties, let alone in charge of the world. But you saw what happened with Afghanistan. Right, again, no, no American death for, you know, two years, the last two years of Trump. And magically, in about two weeks, 13 Americans death, suicide bombers, and then remember, this was the best one, was we, we got the guys. I'm like, so you didn't know who it was. You couldn't foresee this coming. And within 12 minutes, you were able to get the guys, right? No, it turns out they just bombed some farmer. Uh, you know, but they knew the media would do their bidding for them, as they have every time. Um, we then got the adults who were back in charge, 
got on a world stage, our great Secretary of State, who's not qualified to be Secretary of State, but he was the guy that gathered all the 52 signatures from the intelligence community to say that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. I knew it wasn't Russian disinformation because even Hunter Biden didn't say it was Russian disinformation. Even he didn't say it wasn't accurate, he just let our intelligence communities do that. But then we watch the secretary who was bribed with this position, who's making decisions that could again get us into a nuclear war, with the world's largest nuclear superpower by volume of nuclear warheads. And he got on a stage, and after fighting an enemy for 20 years, with a straight face said that he is shocked, and this is pretty much verbatim, the media will probably fact check me because I put the comma in the wrong spot, but he is shocked and dismayed that the Taliban did not install a more diverse and inclusive, I mean think about it, these are the serious people that are back, I'm like wait a minute, like you mean the people we've been at war with for 20, the guys that like put journalists in cages and lit them on fire. Uh, the guys that would take homosexuals and throw them off of buildings. You're shocked and dismayed. I mean, maybe if you're dismayed, fine, but you're shocked. If you're shocked, you're not a serious person. That they didn't have, you think what, they were going to have like the Taliban trans coalition? They were going to invite Dylan Mulvaney over or whatever that dude's name is? Like, <laughs> He's gonna have a seat at the table of the Taliban government. Like, like, like really? You know. And then we could talk about the economy. I mean, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching Bidenomics being touted. Yeah, because two plus two equals ninety-seven in these morons. But yeah, it's, it's shocking. And listen, I, I, I get it. You know, I, my sort of hobby is my. When I'm not working, like, my happy place is sort of with real Americans. But I also still understand where I come from. And I understand that I am the son of a billionaire from Manhattan. And if I'm at the grocery store with sticker shock, that's a serious problem. <laughs> Two of my boys fishing to Alaska uh, a couple weeks ago. We came back, uh, you know, right before school sort of started up with them. And we're in the airport in Anchorage, and I got McDonald's for me and two young boys, and it was $37. Like, again, if I feel it, how is it that Democrat politicians don't understand that that's crushing middle America? Okay, then you add on to that not just the inflationary component, but the interest component of that, right? If I buy a new truck, I can buy it all cash. The average American isn't doing that, so they're paying 175% of what the truck probably cost five years ago because of inflation, but then they're also paying 3x what they would have on the financing component because they don't have the free cash to be able to buy it outright. That's the hidden cost of some of these things that's not even being talked about. But they keep doing it, you know, because, and it's not because they're stupid. So many people, if you're in this room, like you're into this shit, like it's fine, you know, you're, you're following it. No but, the, no, but the average person isn't, you know, they're, they're trying to live their American dream. What hasn't been already exported to China? Sorry, China. <laughs> We have to use the appropriate vernacular. You know, they're, they're struggling. You know, despite what Joe Biden can say on TV and the mainstream media lackeys will tell you how great it is, they'll find, you know, they won't even find a number that works because there are none. There's not a single economic metric where we are better off. But what they'll do is they'll change the way the numbers are computed. Right? I saw, I was it last week? Paul Krugman, right? Nobel laureate account, economist. He goes, inflation is great. What were the four things he took out? If, yeah, yeah, we're actually in a great inflation environment. It's down significantly if you take out food, <laughs> housing, energy, and transportation. Fact check me, please. Please, this 
just a no laureate economist telling the American people, like, it's like, how much are the Democrats just paying you to say this? Because literally, the asterisk, it's on there. He shows a chart, it looks like inflation's coming down. He goes, the asterisk is, if you remove food, <laughs> shelter, transportation, and energy. So, so if you remove literally everything you need to survive, Uh, you know, I don't know. Trans surgeries are down significantly in cost. So America should rejoice. Everything else, you're screwed. You're on your own. These aren't serious people. But it doesn't matter because, again, that person that's living for five minutes, listening in the background, you know, they're listening to CNN in the background because they think that's actually news. So, oh, that's. Like, is that true, or did you see that on CNN? No, I saw it on CNN. Probably <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> they're, they're too busy to try, they're trying to survive to figure it out. So, you know, it's not our ideas versus their ideas on a level playing field. It's our ideas smothered by big tech, by big social, you know, there's a reason. You, you Google an issue, a topic, you know, Google the hundred Biden corruption, it shows up on, you know, page 4,000 of Google search. Oh yeah, no, it's there, it's, it's on Google. You know, the first 12 articles are on CNN, how Hunter Biden is a great man. He knows we're not actually prostitutes. He was supporting, he was supporting women in need. You know, I get, give him a hard time. Don Jr. is, you know, Don Jr., I, they say it every time. I give a speech. Don Jr.'s on coke. I'm like, you got video of the other guy. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not exactly low energy, but like, if I was actually on coke, it would probably be very different. <laughs> you saw what my dad did to Jeb with low energy. You think I could get away with being low energy in my family? No, you get thrown out the window of Trump Tower. <laughs> How dare he? How dare he make fun of someone with addiction? Like, listen, we all know someone with addiction. It's a terrible thing, right? Does not absolve you from selling out your country. Does not absolve you from being a piece of shit. Like, like just stop. That's for you, baby. But, you know, that's the world in which we live. I mean, we literally just sent ground troops to the Middle East. We haven't been at war in oh, nine months or so, so it's time. You know? Big war, got sick of watching Big Pharma get rich. It's our turn again. We gotta, we gotta make that happen. And the American people don't want that. I'll do it in this room. I said I would do it before. Raise your hand if Ukraine is the number one issue for you as a Republican in America. No. Top three. No. Top ten. No. Okay. For the witnesses in the media, I have done this, this is like the 15th time I've done this. Groups from like 200 to about 5,000. One guy, one time, it was a top ten issue from him. He just happened to be from the Ukraine. Because I asked, I go, where are you from? He goes, Kiev. I go, oh, that's fine. Maybe. Uh, so, one out of, let's call it 25,000 or so people that I've surveyed in the last year about this issue, it is a top 10 issue for us. Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate, will tell people with a straight face, it is the number one issue for Republicans in America and we're going to keep spending your grandchildren's future to support corrupt and broken regimes in Eastern Europe with no actual goal in sight. You know, as long as the money keeps going, the wars will keep going. Right? Yeah, they're, they're not going to ever stop as long as they're getting rich. You know, it's not Zelensky on the front lines. You know, it's some peasants that they'll send out there to die so that you know, they can keep making money. They'll pill for this. They'll buy another home in the south of France. Whatever it may be. You know, they're not really at risk. The women fled the country. They're probably shacked up with some dudes in Eastern or Western Europe right now. The men will die in cannon fodder, and BlackRock will come over and take over the farmland. We all know where this is going. 
It's almost too obvious at this point. And again, as long as that money's flowing indefinitely, there's never an incentive to get to the table and actually sort these things out. I know my father was ridiculed mercilessly by the media when he said, I just want all the death to stop. I mean, of course he was right. Even Joe Rogan was like, that's the only answer. You know, not, not exactly a concern. It's the only answer. But for the media, that wasn't enough. Because Ukraine has become the new religion of the left. Right? It started off with it was climate change for a while, led by Lord Priestess Greta Thunberg. <laughs> no, that's a, a brilliant scientific mind. Definitely not a child that's been used. Uh, you know, it went to, you know, Fauci. He became the, the high priest of the of the media and the left. You know, beyond reproach. It doesn't matter that lied to the American people and lied about everything. And so, you know, they're like, how do you know he lied? I go, because his emails to his colleagues that we've all seen are exactly the opposite of what he told the American people. One of them is a lie. Two opposite things cannot hold true at the same, it's just, I don't think that's physically possible. And yet it didn't matter. You know, and it's now moved on to Zelensky. Trump was the guy that was supposed to start all these wars, but strangely enough, Russia didn't invade any of their neighbors under Trump. Woo! China wasn't flying sorties over in Taiwan. They certainly weren't threatening America like Iran has, and when they did, they paid a the consequence. You know, that was, remember the outrage of the media? It's like, you took out, you're not allowed to do this. Like, you mean a general shows up in a foreign land where it looks like they're trying to invade our embassy. The guy has been the architect of every terror attack on U.S. troops in Afghanistan and Iraq with IEDs for this. We know this for a fact. He's probably not there for humanitarian purposes. <laughs> Just going to go out on a limb here. And rather than start an entire war with Iran, they take out the guy that's actually the troublemaker. And that, that wasn't good enough for that, right? <laughs> So guys, what we need to do is we need to get back to some common sense. Yeah. It's not that hard. But no one's... Well, no, it, it's still not that hard. I get, you're right. I mean, you'd be surprised because people in Washington are not capable of doing that. But it's because they're not willing to do it. Right? The weak Republicans you see in Washington that, you know, vote with the Democrats every time because they understand that it's easy existence to actually be a Republican in Washington. You can be one as long as they know you will fold when it matters. You can speak to, you know, the average Republican group in the country is a group of three or four people. And you can speak to those people and tell them what they want to hear. But as long as he does the opposite when it matters, you can even vote Republican like 85% of the time. But you got to fold on their issues, and they do every time. So every, you know, everyone, you know, there's not many, you know. There, there, by the way, there's a lot. There, listen, it, true on that one, but there's a lot that you, on paper, they look a lot better than when you actually look at their voting record. There's guys that do that very well too. Again, they're they're more vocal about telling you what you want to hear, but they don't actually always do that. So we need to get that resolved. We need people to become unafraid. The way to do this is we have to start actually talking about it. We have to have people understand exactly what it is. Right? You know, in a state like this, I get it. Trust me, no one understands more than me. Maybe my dad, because they want to lock him away for a thousand years. <laughs> and or the death penalty. But, you know, he's a young and vibrant guy. But a thousand years is a long time. Probably. That may even be too much for him. <laughs> But again, you know, for, for what? Like, fake insurrections, you know? The first unarmed insurrection in the history of the world, but it doesn't matter, right? Now, when they do show up armed and loot Seattle and uh, Portland, and they take over courthouses, or they occupy buildings, or they pull, you know, you could be in Congress and you can disrupt proceedings by pulling fire arms, and you know, the same thing they try. There's people doing 20 years for what someone's gonna pay $100 fine for. So if you still think there's equal justice on the law, you have not been watching. There was a gentleman in this room earlier, actually, because when we talk about just how far it's gotten, is he still here? We talk about there we go. concerned mothers have been labeled domestic terrorists. In this case, domestic terrorists, because they go to a PTA meeting and don't want their children to be indoctrinated with 
bullshit, right? They don't want to be told that they're the worst human beings ever created simply because they happen to be born white. I mean, not that they had any say in the matter, or other lies, or having you know some rainbow-haired teacher convince a three-year-old that they're trans. You know, that child cannot make a decision for themselves for another 15 years. They couldn't buy a pack of cigarettes, but well, you know, if you want to mutilate your body permanently, get on drugs that you know have incredibly high recidivism rates and then high suicide rates because people realize what they've done. We're going to let a three-year-old make that decision. We've lost our minds. Well, where is the gentleman that was? There was a gentleman here earlier that was said he was visited by the FBI because he literally showed. Yeah, because he showed up. No, think about it. Because he showed up to a PTA meeting and was just concerned about literally indoctrinating our children with like Marxist leftist bullshit. Mm. And in local parentheses. Think of how insane that is. Now, you know who the FBI is not focused on? <laughs> Terrorists! Like, how about, has there been a shooting? We had a shooting this week in Maine. And as always, never fails. Uh, he was on our radar. Now, he was on their radar, but they were too busy chasing down your grandmother who happened to be within a thousand miles of Washington, D.C. on January 6th. So the guy's been in and out of mental institutions, jacked up on drugs, on watch list, not able to own firearms, but they're not actually watching him, just like they're not watching the black supremacists who drove through the, remember the Christmas parade in Wisconsin? Yes. No, it was incredible. It was the first time a vehicle by itself drove through a crowd of people at a Christmas parade. That's what we were told by the media. Remember that one? A vehicle drove through killing people. Yeah. Not, oh, you know, it just drove itself like someone forgot to put the parking brake on? That's how bad we've been lied to. So what we need to do is we need to be able to talk to people about how ridiculous this is. The examples of what we're talking about now. The, just look at the success. Like I said, if I feel it, then you have, you know, it's always the economy, but there's so much more at stake right now. You know, do I, yeah, I might, you know, you want to send your children to die in the Middle East because someone wants to start another war and a couple guys want to get their board seat at Raytheon, a couple generals who've been pushing the trans agenda in the military, they can't get their recruitment numbers up, so we'll win them. Someone said something funny on Twitter the other day, it was sort of interesting, it was, you know we're going to war because it's the first time in about 10 years that they've seen army recruitment videos that actually featured white guys again. <laughs> no, and it's sort of funny, right? It's like, they've been pushing the trans thing and you see, you know, every woman in the world has been in every army recruitment video, it was like, the old army recruitment video from like a year ago, remember? It started off with a girl with two moms from San Francisco. I'm saying, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, folks, okay? But I, give me a break. This is probably not how we're going to win wars. Right? It was like the CIA video that came out at the same time recruiting. Remember that guy? The CIA did a recruitment video, and it was telling a guy with extreme anxiety. I have extreme anxiety. I basically couldn't function, and the CIA was very welcoming to me. I'm saying, I don't know. I feel bad for the guy, but probably not who I want on the front lines of our intelligence community. Like, when China captures that guy, they're going to break him in less than one second. We'll put the over-under at one second. I'm taking the under. What are we doing? We're not serious. So we need to be serious, but we can't do that by ourselves. We've seen it. You put out one guy by himself, they'll take him out. They did it to my father. Right? The most powerful guy in the world, don't pay whatever it may, it doesn't matter. That's what we're up against. You've seen the weaponization of our government against individuals. You've seen it against your friends. You've seen it to people going to PTA meetings. You've also seen the exact opposite and the lack thereof in terms of enforcement on the other side, whether it's the Summer of Love riots of 2020. You know, so Mostly peaceful protests. There just happens to be a few buildings burning in the background. I'm sure that's a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, the reporter's telling the story about how it's mostly peaceful. Okay, he said, hit the head with a brick. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just about social justice. They really needed the Gucci purse that they stole from, you know, it's how they were going to feed themselves by eating a leather purse, apparently. I don't know.
I can't make any sense of it, but I, I imagine if I can't, no one else can. But we have to have that conversation. We have to have it out loud. Uh, we have to be unafraid. Everything that they've done, whether it's to my father, my family, everyone else, it's designed to put you in a corner. They want you to curl up in a ball and die. That is their win. They want you to think that it's hopeless. They want you to think there's nothing you can do, but you can. But you're not going to get anything done if you hide in that corner. You're not going to get anything done if you're afraid to actually be vocal. They cannot cancel 150 million yeah. dollars. They may try, but they can't do it. They can't cancel one. If we all sit there behind one person and, and hope that it works out for them, test the wind, see what's going on, they can do that. We all got to go. So I, I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, really, thank you, man. Thank you. We really appreciate everything that you guys are doing. That you have the guts to do this. Thank you so much again to everyone for having us here today. And let's keep fighting and let's win and save our country. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mr. Donald Trump Jr.